Hello, welcome to Awakening the Entrepreneur Within. It's Michael E. Gerber again. Uh, you might be getting absolutely sick of me, but hear me, I'm going to persist through the days and ages of your life, of your entrepreneurial miasma, to help you understand what miasma is and why you experience it day after day after day. Today, we're gonna to be talking about law and money. We're gonna be talking to two experts, Stan Paget and Pam Jordan, who have actually gone through this process countless times with countless leaders, entrepreneurs, small business owners, managers, people who essentially get into trouble because they truly don't understand the role of law and money in the growth, the development, the transformation of a company from a company of one to a company of 1,000, which is obviously the subject we're here to talk about. I'd like to introduce you to Stan and to Pam, and you can hear them for yourself. Stan. Hello, hey. Michael. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Wonderful. I want you to meet our audience. There are many, 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 many folks out there who are running a business day after day after day after day and experiencing all the problems and excesses and enthusiasms of doing what they do. But primarily, each and every single one of them experience the frustrations and the complications of systems thinking when it comes to law and money. And that's why you're here today, because you've dealt with that problem for years, each of you. Stan, you longer than Pam, obviously. But what can I say? You have worked together for quite some time solving problems on the street with people who got themselves into trouble. And that trouble has always created a conversation that's been very, very difficult for them to have. Stan, I'd like you to talk about the miasma of law. And then I'd like to have Pam talk about the miasma of money. And Stan, you just described it as clearly has anybody has ever done. Tell us what the miasma of law looks like, sounds like, feels like when you're caught up in it. Absolutely. I, it's a Southern expression, clear as Mississippi River mud. <laughs> and I saw, some, I saw something else recently, Michael, that I think encapsulated it very, very well. The reason there are 17,000 pages in our law books is we couldn't follow 10 lines on stone tablets. You got it. It's very, the law is overwhelming and the environment for small business is much more positive in the last couple of years than it has been, but it's still, there are so many laws, so many regulations, so many different things that you need to understand, but that's not an entrepreneur's thought process when they're excited about beginning a new business. They and, believe they can go online. And Stan, let me, let me say about what you just said, understand no attorney of ours has ever dealt with the question, how do we prepare our company in each and every case that's absolutely necessary to create a foundation upon which we can make the choices and decisions we're going to need to make, but long before we need to make them. Could you speak to that? It's very rare that you find business owners who are that proactive about 
the legal and the monetary structure that Pam will talk about. It's excitement. It's get started. It's do, 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 do. And then they sometimes begin to understand the systems and processes that you teach so eloquently, but it's very difficult for them to find a lawyer and accountant that will work with them on that basis because they tend to view them as adversaries and not allies. Yep, that's really, really important. You're an adversary, not an ally. Um, you're only there to solve a problem they're, they've got as opposed to deal with problems they're absolutely certain to create because they haven't thought systemically through what law is really there to do. And then you can actually prepare your company to deal with the vast majority of problems that are going to be created by the decisions you make. And I know from my experience with you, Stan, that you as an attorney have approached the practice of law in a significantly different way than the vast majority of attorneys I've met before you and understand that's over the past 45 years. So that's why you're here because essentially you have this brilliant systemic approach to law. And can you simply define how you came to that choice and then what you did about it so that our audience can actually relate to it. I came to it by being, I have been a business trial lawyer for 36 years. That means that every type of business problem, every failure, every conflict, I end up dealing with. And I, I can solve problems on a one-off basis, but I began to see so many patterns, the same problems so often I thought, wouldn't it be better if I could teach people, teach clients, teach a larger audience, let me tell you how to avoid those problems because it's so much less expensive for you in terms of time, money, loss of opportunity, cost, distraction to proactively deal with those things. And there are very, the, the common, the problems are common, the same ones that Pam run, runs into. She and I end up spending a lot of time and a lot of clients' money cleaning up problems that could have been solved up front so much less expensively, so much more effectively. And we just decided we got to do something about this because the two of us can only help so many people. So we want to keep you on a broader scale. Yeah, so hear that, every single one of you. Um, Stan decided to solve the problem before it appeared. Stan made the intelligent choice to solve the problem before it appeared by essentially creating a strategic law firm that took on its mantle to become an extraordinary teacher of entrepreneurs, of managers, of executives, of leaders, of owners, to understand the problems they're creating before they ever come to the point to make the decisions that create those problems so as to shape the system of their business, of their management, of their leadership, of their um, client fulfillment processes in order to be prepared for whatever might come up. And Stan, I'm saying that about you would you please share um, in a summary of what I just said, what that's meant to you and your clients? All right. If you think about big companies, all of the Fortune 500 companies, all of the companies traded on the stock exchanges, they have in-house lawyers they call general counsel. So that when management has a significant decision to make, they get legal advice before they do it, not after they've made the mistake. What I do for clients, for entrepreneurs, and I've represented everything from startups to companies that do more than $100 million in revenue, is I create that relationship with that owner, that president, that manager, and say, pick up the phone. Spend 15 minutes. Get the, get the direction. Now you really have enough information to make a good business decision before you start. 
And it's it's taking that relationship and making making the lawyer part of your team, not an ally instead of an adversary. I got it. And every single one of you hear it. Now it's really the question of whether you understand why that leverage is so significant, so important for every strategic decision you're about to make, whether that be lead generation, whether that be lead conversion, whether that be client fulfillment, whatever that may be, in order to truly be on top of your company, looking down from 3,000 feet so that you can deal on the street with your company in a way that positions you supremely with all your competition. Imagine the edge you have the moment you understand what Stan just shared with us. And the reason Stan's here is because when I first met him not that long ago, he literally nailed it. And he nailed it in a way that no attorney had ever nailed it before with me in a way that I knew I had to share Stan with you. So Stan, I hope you're not turning red in your face because you're embarrassed by what I'm saying. I appreciate it. But Thank here, that's exactly why I asked you to join us here today. Michael, now, can you share a story with you? <laughs> Let me say one other thing. I'm sorry. I can't help it. This is what I do. I want to introduce Pam because Stan then brought Pam to us in the process of engaging him with a problem that we wanted to solve. And not only did he truly solve that problem in short order, but he demonstrated to us how we had created that problem so we could take a systemic approach to it. And he wanted to share with us his partner, Pam, who effectively does the same thing with money. So Pam, would you describe how you've countered the miasma of money, the miasma of finance, the miasma of financial management, the miasma of financial leadership in the very same way that Stan has done with law. I want to introduce Pam to all you folks. Pam? Excellent. You Michael, thank you so much for having me. I'd love to share you some of my experiences. Um, I deal with entrepreneurs, technicians, managers, and a lot of times they just want to avoid their numbers. I've had multiple entrepreneurs just look me in the face and say they want to pretend they don't exist. And so my goal is to create a system where they have numbers they can trust and the data is accurate and I partner with them and whoever's in their team to give them real time information so they can make good decisions and give them accurate data. Cause a lot of times people just use their gut and then it costs them $50,000 and then they've got to call me in to clean it up. So if I can create a system ahead of time for them to be able to track their progress and not be afraid of their numbers, they can make huge steps forward rather than 20 steps backwards. So what I hear you saying is that essentially, um, when you start your relationship with a business of any size, whether it be, as I call it, a company of one or a company of 1,000, however sophisticated or unsophisticated the person who's retained you might be, you engage them in a conversation about your approach to finance, your approach to management in such a way that they understand your job is first to install a system of money, a system of management in such a way that they can understand it and relate to it on an ongoing basis. Is that help to um, communicate how you go about what you do? 
Yep, that's exactly what I do. I get down to the nitty gritty of what's important to that owner, what their goals are, and I create a system that their team can follow and give the owner those benchmarks or those pieces of information so they can make good, intelligent decisions, whether it's a landscaper or you know, $20 million company, they still need to have a system for how to get real information and how to make decisions. I got it. And, and so understand from my perspective, as someone who has worked with, you know, if not countless small businesses, at least close to that, over the past 45 years, I describe the relationship with that small business as beginning in that thing we're calling the Mississippi mud that Stan just referred it as. And what's your version of the Mississippi mud that Stan has experienced with his clients mm -hmm. and anyone who comes to him to solve a problem, that's the only way they come to him, the only way they come to an attorney. In our world of small and growing companies, oops, we got a problem. And suddenly they're speaking to somebody who doesn't simply address the problem, but addresses the lack of strategy that created that problem in the first place to correct that. In your case, identically the same thing occurs. Yeah. So how does that look to you um, as you're speaking now to many thousands of small business owners, leaders, would-be entrepreneurs, um, executives, um, and so forth and so on, um, speak to them in the way you experience it so that they can best understand why your approach has had such significant impact on the clients you've worked with. Perfect. Yeah. So with the companies that I work with, a lot of entrepreneurs just want to, like I said, ignore the numbers. And it's not until they can't make payroll or the bank won't give them money or they can't buy another truck that they raise their hand and they're freaking out because they don't have the cash. So as entrepreneurs and business owners, the key is to be in real time with where you are, where your numbers are know where your strengths are, manage your team and have a system. So at there's certain checkpoints and there's certain triggers so that if this happens, then we call this. And if this happens, then we call this. But so often people just ignore it and say, oh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. But then it's too late. So if you can stop now and look and fix the problem and create the systems, you can avoid all the mess down the road and know now that yes, I have money for payroll next week and the week after that, but in three weeks, we've got a problem. You just nailed it in exactly the way Stan nailed it. Because you say, while you're solving the problem, you're creating the strategic system to prevent that problem from happening again. So you're doing two kinds of work. You're working on it and you're working in it. In my e-myth terms, working on it means standing above it and relating to it in a way that you can forestall that happening again. We're not gonna have the problem with trucks three months from now, six months from now, a hundred months from now, because, because we've created our truck evolution system. We're not gonna have a problem with the payroll because we've completely transformed the way we deal with payroll forever in the future. And because each and every time, Pam, you solve the problem today, which I call working in it, you're simultaneously preventing that problem from reoccurring, hopefully. Yes. If they will follow the system, yes, that's the goal. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said, hopefully. If they follow the system, of course. But hear me, in my mind, because you two have truly impacted the way I look at attorneys, the way I look at financial managers, financial planners, 
financial leaders, et cetera, and so forth. I know that you manage the system you've installed in such a way as to remind your client again and again and again before it becomes the problem you were brought in to solve so that you prevent them from simply following the stupid system they didn't have, they created, et cetera, and so forth, because they got off their track. 100%. So, so from a financial approach, from a legal approach, your systems thinkers who have dealt with the problem that you have to deal with on the street while essentially preventing the problem from reappearing again by creating a reminder, a reminder, a trigger for your clients that they cannot avoid every single time they come to that place to make another decision. Does that sound like what you've done? Exactly. <laughs> what can I say? You did great. <laughs> Hey, that's that's the impact you've had on me. And that's why you're here today. Stan, does that sound like what you've done? It does. My system is not as detailed as Pam's because it doesn't deal with numbers. It deals with decisions that simply need input at the right time. And they make enough mistakes and the mistakes cost them enough money, they decide it's better to call than to just go ahead and do whatever it is. So think about it in this way and share it with everybody in this way. When I'm making a decision about lead generation, I now have a template I can use to in fact make that decision more intelligently and less problem centric. When I'm making a decision about um, lead conversion, meaning sales, I can make that decision more congruent with the business model that you brought, Stan, from a legal perspective, and you brought, Pam, from a financial perspective. Is that clear? It is. It is. Is that, is that what you've done? It yes. has. It's a combination of cleaning up the mess that they've created and creating a system so it doesn't happen again. There you go. Isn't that extraordinary? And what's really extraordinary is Stan and Pam, you've actually accomplished that separate from each other and you were attracted to each other because you saw in the other someone who has dealt with it in exactly the same way as you've learned to do, which created the harmony between you. Exactly. And besides that, Pam's just a lot of fun to be around. Hey, <laughs> done, Jeff Michael. She's great. I got it. I got it. And and that also creates a synergy between money and law, between law and money, between operations and management, leadership and management, in a way that's rare to find in the companies who come to you simply because nobody's ever spoken to them about that synergy before. Stan? Yes, sir. Your I, thought about that? I look at it, Michael, as, as if we can take people's companies and help them either when they start them or as they begin to grow them and they're looking to really do a plan, they follow your system, and they're saying, how do I build this company to a thousand? How do I prepare it to be sold? What systems do I have to place? What process do I need in place? What legal, what legal issues are going to have to be dealt with? What structural issues? What tax and accounting issues? What finance and cash issues are there? We actually put together a very simple 20 question test that any business owner can take to figure out where they are. Because if they know the answer to the question is yes, if they don't know the answer, they're not sure, the answer is no. And if you think about it as four legs of a solid business, a base, 
that you can build a massive business on. If you have a, a, a leg that should be five yeses and you only have one and you have another leg that has none, it's become a, your business just became a three legged stool with stork legs. What kind of business are you going to build on that? If you want a big business, you need four solid, stable legs, and that's two accounting and two legal. And when you have that, you can build Google, you can build Apple, you can build Amazon, but you have to support it right. Yeah, but you just said something which is really interesting. You said a three-legged stool. A three-legged stool works because each of the legs are put in a very specific place in a very specific way, and it's truly balanced. The problem with a rectangular table with a leg on one end and a leg on the other end and a leg on the other end, but no leg on that end you absolutely create a catastrophe. And it's understanding the difference between the stool and the table and the difference between a four-legged table and a three-legged table that effectively defines your legal certainty or your legal absolutely clear uncertainty because nobody would build that rectangular table with three legs unless one of those legs was placed in the middle of the other end as though it were a stool. <laughs> but yeah. I see three-legged stools all the time. And sometimes you get, even on the three-legged stool, if you have two, two legs that are two by fours and one that is a long piece of straw, it's... <laughs> And what we, what we do is sometimes we actually see people who, because they don't do some of these things right, they build a successful business and they end up losing their entire business because there's legal things like asset protection, creditor protection that they didn't know about, they didn't do. And so they can lose their life's work. And that's one of the things that we try to make sure that when a business owner has solved the problem of money in their family that we stay solved. They built that for their family. They didn't build it for somebody else to take away. In the context of what you just said, Stan, there's a science for creating three-legged stools. And that science, if it's ignored, will absolutely produce an imbalance between those three legs. Correct. Right. Absolutely going to. So if you are privy to the science of a three-legged stool from a legal perspective, you can absolutely demonstrate how that three-legged stool must be built from the very beginning and how to test it um, every so often to make sure something hasn't gone wrong with the science. And identically the same with Pam. There's a science for three-legged stools regarding money. And she can prevent that three-legged stool mishap from occurring by analyzing, utilizing that science of three-legged stools of money in such a way that will prevent the mishap that is absolutely going to occur, absolutely clearly going to occur, you can actually demonstrate it so that when you work with that client, you're helping them to understand the science. And the science is clearly applicable to every company on the planet. As Stan said, every company can become an Apple. Every company can become a Google but you have to understand and apply the science of money, of law, of management, of leadership in such a way that creates the balance, the harmony, the synergy that each of you are committed to produce for every single one of your clients. 
So, and when I say that, and I don't want to talk through this, um, I want to simply say what I'm getting from this, which is what you're providing along with what I've been doing is that absolutely critical balance is someone like me, someone like you, and someone like you in our three-legged stool that effectively can communicate how each of the laws, the science of law, of money, of management, of entrepreneurship overall must be applied in order for it to work and to prevent the horrible miasma that's created called the Mississippi mud of someone who effectively failed to see that synergy, that harmony, that essential science that's critical for each and every one of them. Does that help define what we all do? It sure does. <laughs> Michael, you, one of the things you said really struck me, and that was that you not only have to set it up correctly, you have to review it periodically. Absolutely. The structures for law and money that apply to a startup change at about what, Pam, five to 10 million, and again at 50 million, and again at 100 million. You can't simply, it's not a, a, an advertisement. You set it and forget it. You have to review it periodically, systematically, the way that you teach people to do. Absolutely. And that's what I've already presumed you do ideally in an ideal relationship with an ideal client who understands what the words synergy and harmony and balance actually mean. And when you find that in a relationship, Stan and Pam and Michael, our three-legged stool, um, you come face to face with something that's so rare on this planet to understand why there's so much business solving problems. And yet that's not truly the business any one of us really want to be in. What we want to do, you and I, on our three-legged stool is to prevent problems but even more important than that, to seize the opportunities that exist for those who are truly balanced in what they do. Does that sound like it re resonates in each and every one of you as I'm sort of forcing this conversation where I always force the conversation? Yeah, no, the three-legged stool of finance is really important to make sure you get it right out the gate because otherwise you're cleaning up a big mess and your table's just going to fall over. So you've got to understand, regardless of if you understand money or not, get a partner who does so that they can help you build that foundation. So your stool won't fall over. You don't have to have an MBA or CPA, but if you do it right the first time, you will save yourself so many headaches. Yep. Isn't that wonderful? And Stan, how would you like to say goodbye to our guests? Uh, Michael, it's been a privilege just to, uh, to get to know you, get to spend time with you and to get to work with you. And, you know, I, I did partner with Pam because I found somebody who was a kindred spirit, who's an incredibly hard worker uh, and just gets things done. When she tells you, I'm going to do A, B, C, and D, they're all going to happen. And that is also a very rare quality these days. And I appreciate and enjoy everything about the way that she works and the way she approaches business. Yeah. And to me, that's called integrity. And so integrity is another rare phenomenon on the street. Yeah. And that's why you're here as well as your financial brilliance, your legal brilliance, it's the integrity that I saw in your souls when we first met. And I want you to know that it was in short order that we retained Stan to solve a very big problem I'd created years ago. And it was absolutely extraordinary the way he approached it. So I'm speaking from experience, not just from my 
hyperbole um, that I know these two folks who are sitting in front of us truly understand our perspective about systems thinking, but not only that, but the ability to depend upon the word of another, because unless you can do that, it will all go to pot. So I wanna thank you both for being here. Um, I'm quelling over who you are and what you do. I'm introducing you to the folks who are watching us simply because I believe in your integrity and in your knowledge and your ability to apply each in every circumstance to create a system that prevents the miasma to occur between you and your clients, between them and their people, between their people and their clients and their customers, et cetera, and so forth in a way that just absolutely sings. So thank you for joining us here. I, I want to say to each and every one of you folks who are watching us that what I've just been speaking about wasn't just talk. It wasn't just a story to tell to excite you about something that isn't um, anything other than skin deep. It was absolutely something that we were moved by. Luz Delia Gerber, my wife, my partner, um, the leader of our company, in order to be able to bring to you an idea that is so compelling that to not seek it out, to not pursue it with everything you've got is a absolute catastrophe. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going to do, no matter what you think you're going to do, that you absolutely have to create a foundation for. And that's why we created Radical You. Radical You is now becoming the foundation for what every single solitary company of one, um, leader of one, a um, person who's pursuing something more than that, to be able to build that three-legged stool, that absolutely critical foundation, both in their mind and in their heart and in their body, to be able to take it out in the world with the absolute conviction that when and as they do that, it's going to have a profound impact on everyone it touches. And as the leader of this organization, this organization of one called by others, the solopreneur, which in fact, most aren't really, what they are is what we've called for years, now over 45 of them, a technician suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. The cook opens up a restaurant, the, 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 the HVAC contractor opens up a business to sell his or her services, a plumber does the same, a real estate agent does the same, and on and on and on and on telling this story about how good they are, how committed they are, how steadfast they are, and how important it is that they do what they do just for you, and they show up to do it sometimes until they become exhausted by what they're not doing. We've just dealt with what they're not doing which are two legs of this very, very critical stool, the money and the law. The money and the law will bite you in the butt every single day if you don't understand it and if you don't apply it and if you don't think about it before it ever does what I just said, bite you in the butt and hear me, People out there in your world are being bit in the butt every single day, monumentally, to such a degree, nobody 
nobody in his or her right mind would ever decide to go into business for himself or herself because they have absolutely no idea what's going to be required of them. That's why we created Radical You and what we call the Eightfold Path. Now, I've spoken to you about this before, and I'll speak to you about this again. But hear me until you really take it in. The dream, the vision, the purpose, the mission, the job, the practice, the business, the enterprise, and the three-legged stool at the bottom of all that, you will never benefit from what I'm sharing with you here. My wish Luz Delia's wish, um, the wish of Stan, the wish of Pam, the wish of every single individual we brought to meet with you is that harmony, that steadfast integrity, that absolutely clear, monumentally powerful ability to produce great results on this planet are absolutely available to every single one of you. Every single one of you right now. This is Mike Lee Gerber speaking to you from Carlsbad, California. And thank you, Stan. And thank you, Pam. And we'll see you all again. Bye-bye. See you soon.